This week on Edge, we check out homegrown aviation breakthrough Arlac. We review the monster Asus PB287Q monitor and look at the impact cell phones are having on the art of storytelling. This week in Tech News. The South African government is getting in on the app game. It's just released a new program for Android and iOS handsets, which will push official communications out to citizens. Download the South African government app from Google Play or iTunes. Drone maker DJI is king of the unmanned aircraft scene and its mid-sized quadcopters are popular with hobbyists and professional filmmakers. It's just announced that it will be building a compact mirrorless camera into its new models, which will take lenses from the Olympus Panasonic Micro Four Thirds range. Apple's FaceTime and iMessage just got a bit safer. The firm has just introduced the option for two-factor authentication before you can sign on and read your messages, which should keep them hidden from prying eyes. Speaking of cybersecurity, French firm Gamalto has released its annual report, which reckons that in 2014, big businesses lost 974 million sensitive personal records to online thievery. That's 31 records a second for the entire year. How's this for a bit of township tech? The Internet Society and Soweto Wireless User Group have teamed up to put on the first Soweto Innovation Week, which will take place in the second week of April at the Soweto Theatre. You can register for tickets at the official website. For more news, go to edge.htxt.co.za. Today, the Edge team is off to meet the guys at Paramount Group, Africa's largest privately owned defense and aerospace company. Now, end of last year, they did a maiden flight in a revolutionary piece of equipment. Naturally, we're about to explore and find out exactly what it is. However, while we fly off to Bondaboom Airport, let's check in with the Hypertech Geeks. For today's tech tip, I'm gonna tell you how to make your phone do more while you do less with an app called If This Then That. If This Then That, or IFT as you can pronounce it, lets you automate many of the things you do with your phone every day, like switching between Wi-Fi and cellular networks. Switching from cellular data to Wi-Fi to save money on data costs as you move between home and work can be a little bit time consuming or something you don't think about until it's too late. IFT lets you create a rule that does it automatically. The IF is a condition you meet, like arriving at your home or office, which then triggers the THAT. In this case, the action of turning off cellular data, activating Wi-Fi, and joining your work or office network. It can be set up to work in reverse as well. Another example is automatic photo backup. You probably take a lot of photos, and you might have lost a few by misplacing your phone at some point. If this, then that lets you create a rule that triggers an automatic upload of any photo taken by your phone's camera to any of a large number of online storage services like Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive. It's exactly like creating an immediate photo backup in real time, all without having to lift a finger once the rule has been set. IFT is available on both the Google Play Store for Android phones and tablets, as well as on the iTunes App Store for iPads and iPhones. If used cleverly, IFT can up the convenience factor of your phone quite dramatically. We're out at Arlac Advanced High Performance Reconnaissance Light Aircraft. Now, while I know that sounds like an absolute mouthful, trust me, this is a special, unique beauty. First of its kind in Africa and globally, let's check in with Paul Potkita, Program Manager at Arlac. Arlac is the first military manned fixed wing aircraft to be fully designed, tested and developed in Africa. The aircraft itself is a global first because it integrates designs from attack helicopters, surveillance platforms and reconnaissance aircraft with the ability to carry surveillance, weapons, radar and electronic warfare systems. The aircraft was designed and built by a team of 60 engineers and technicians. Since the launch of the project in September 2011, the team has spent 315,000 labor hours completing detailed designs and manufacturing the first prototype. The aircraft is completely adaptable and can also be configured for training, cargo, disaster management, internal security, border control, maritime patrol and environmental protection. 
Hi, Paul. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And wow, you have a beaut on your hands. And actually, it matches my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. We're very proud of her. First of its kind in Africa and globally, but you've adapted some really interesting technology concepts to this. So we've got jiggless construction as well as paperless design. So the entire plane is designed without any use of paper. It's computer designed, it's computer built as well by the guys on the shop floor, the artisans, everybody got trained. So that was the first step. The second step was doing this in a new manner in jiggless where we don't use anything holding it kind of there. It's like a Lego thing. You start building, it comes alive in front of you. Now, of the 6,000 parts that puts this baby together, 98% of it is actually produced locally, which leads me to my next question. Does 3D printing have any room here? The, the minute you start using complex shapes and stuff, it's very difficult to build it. So, for example, this intake is printed because it's a complex shape. It doesn't take major load, and the 3D printer could make that with this within one morning. So it's phenomenal technology. Is it a bird? Is it a drone? Is it a spacecraft? What is it? <laughs> uh, it is a everyday aircraft. I think what, what's happened in the world, lots of guys developed such expensive military and civilian aircraft that you can't re realistically operate it every day. So we try to create a land cruiser of the sky, something that you can afford to fly that's reliable and that will help and, and, and then you can apply it. So it can do anything from rhino poaching patrols, it can do pipeline patrols, it can do magnetic anomaly detection. For, for mining, but then it goes into a more military side where you can go after the terrorists, go and find them, go and find that guy that's poaching and actually do something about it. It carries very advanced radars and cameras and sensors. Now, it's really a very unusual looking design. And what does that mean for its adaptability going from civilian use to military use? we've got this plug and play capability. What that in reality means, we've created 25 points all over the aircraft where you can attach stuff to. So if you want a new camera or a new antenna or whatever, we, we've created that capability. And that's, fin that's a world first. There's never been a plane designed to, to, that can do this all over the airframe. So for example, if you want something different in the tail, we, we can give you any shape of tail here. Mm. This is all bolt on and bolt on. That's typical art point. And it gives you this, cap this phenomenal capability that you don't have to go change the aircraft or the integrity of the aircraft. Yeah. We've created a point for you where you can go and play with what you want to do on it. Now, Paul, this looks like an in-flight sword that you have in front. <laughs> yes. What is its function? It's probably the thing that, that currently attracts the most attention on Arlac, but it's not part of Arlac in reality. <laughs> so this is just for testing. So we, 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 we learn about the aircraft with this. We measure what angle the, the flow is coming over the aircraft, what other angles we can measure speed. Is there any significance behind the color and what you've actually used to coat the aircraft? So there's, there's quite a few technologies involved here. The first one, it's a, it's a radar absorbent paint. So when the, another country looks at your plane, they can't really see it, they struggle to see it. Visually, we've created a digital camo scheme, which kind of blends in with an urban setup from, from, if you look from the top down on it, but also from the bottom up, it kind of blends in with the sky. So it makes it very difficult to see. Now, no doubt, this is an absolutely awesome design, but flying it, you've got to feel like a rock star. So I'm with Mark, who's actually one of the test pilots for Arlac. Tell me more about what it feels like to fly this. Well, it's been a huge privilege for me to uh, have the opportunity to fly the aircraft, and uh, I can tell you it's an absolute joy to fly. You kind of get distracted by the fact that you're trying to learn as much as you can about the aircraft, and then in retrospect, after the flight, you can kind of think about the more fun aspects. Mark, I have to say, I feel so underdressed. You're looking very, very dapper in your flight uniform. Now, you're actually one of the pilots that's clocked the most amount of flight time within the team. How did you get involved? Well, I got involved with the project. Um, I've done a lot of bush flying, and the aircraft was designed as a, a bush aircraft. In that role, I came and started to develop operating manuals for the aircraft, uh, developing procedures for the aircraft. What else do you think makes this really, really special? And I mean, it's the first of its kind globally and in Africa. What makes you really proud about it? Well, for me, um, the fact that it's been designed and built locally um, and there isn't anything else like it in the world. I mean, there isn't a tandem seat pusher turboprop aircraft like this. There isn't anything with this kind of visibility. Well you know what, there is two seats, not one over here, and I think I want to see what this is like. <laughs> oh, OK. Can I jump in? <laughs> Absolutely, no problem. Have a seat in the front. 
Now, I know growing up as a kid, I've always wanted to have that moment that I've seen in cartoons where there's one big red button and it's actually for an ejector seat. Does it happen here? Well, the aircraft is uh, designed for ejection seats. These are mock-up, uh, they're not live ejection seats, but they are configured exactly in the same way as the ejection seats that uh, the aircraft will use. If anything does go wrong, then you are able to make the decision to eject. Well, I think it's safe to say that the Arlac is definitely my kind of ride. I can miss traffic, it matches my outfit, and I can customize it to anything that I actually want it to be. Ready for takeoff, Captain. Some hot development in SA skies. Top Gun kind of stuff. Well done, SA. We're about to check in with World Film Collective, where they teach people how to make movies on cell phones. But before we get there, let's check in with our hypertext geeks.